we come from sort of working class backgrounds and we didn't, our parents didn't have any money, we didn't have any money, so we had to sort of borrow since we, we knew, there was like two guys we knew on the whole of, in the whole of our area that had synths. So, that, so we used to kind of befriend them and try to borrow them from time to time just to do gigs. But, I mean, electronics was my sort of passion, really. I, I you know, I, as a kid, I was just always meddling with electronics. So I made these kind of weird and wonderful machines that kind of made mad noises, but you couldn't really play tunes on them, but at least they made mad noises when we put them down echo machines. There stuff. was no keyboard, he just made yeah. a circuit, uh, uh, and and, and you, I think very often used his fingers to actually join up the, the connections, just make weird noises, but every week we'd have to put it in the attic to get it out of his mother's back room, because she wanted the dining room. And then when we got it out of the attic, it had broken. He had to put a new part in that wasn't the same as the last one, so it made different noises every week. It was impossible to work with. I did get a bit more sophisticated because I did go to the local library and get a circuit diagram for a drum machine, and then I made a very craft worky and uh, drum, uh, like a uh, manual play drum thing. Paul was, yeah, Paul was making things, and, um, and all I had was a bass guitar, and yeah. we would borrow yeah. fuzz machines and echo machines, and we just made noises. It wasn't until I bought an electric piano for like 20 pounds or something uh, that I could start playing tunes and then uh, so the first thing we did on, on that was actually write electricity with that piano melody that was the first thing we did with that electric piano I mean believe me nobody was more surprised than we were when you know the things we were doing in 1975 76 77 in his mother's room that our friends thought were shit suddenly was a hit single. Next band I've featured a lot recently on my radio show, it's Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, sending out a few messages. We were like, I don't know how this happened, and maybe we'll wake up tomorrow and it didn't happen, but right now, we're on top of the pops. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't believe it, really, <laughs> that, uh, that all of a sudden we were, you know, we were on this programme, Top of the Pops, that we'd been watching as young kids. All of a sudden, we were there playing these kind of crazy electronic songs. because the first few times we did Top of the Pops, we really felt like we were smashing down the walls of cliché because, you know, we'd be on our stage about to start and over there was Elton John or uh, Cliff Richard or, you know, some American disco thing and we were like, you know, we are the future and this is the past and we're going to yeah. kill it. <laughs> So we were geeks. We were. I mean, when we weren't writing songs in his mother's back room, we had a train set and we built model aeroplanes. <laughs> yeah. Total geeks. <laughs> also, you know, when we were kids growing up, we, we heard a lot of stories about war, the Second World War. You know, our parents went through it. So we kind of grew up with the sort of fascination of the Second World War. And then out of that bore a, a sort of a, a, an interest in Second World War aircraft. It's We got some beauties here. This is a B-52. So, you know, it's like tissue paper rippling in the wind. It looks big and powerful, but it's still made by humans and very, very scary. Oh, hello. 
just have a look at all of those nuts and bolts. It's all just <laughs> screwed together. So primitive, but it worked. fascination with primitive technology, if that isn't a contradiction in terms. When I was young, I also fell in love with steam beam engines. You know, the old beam engines that used to pump yeah. like this, like Newcomen and James Watt. And, you know, we've written about telephone boxes and aeroplanes and oil refineries. And you kind of get into this almost sort of anthropomorphic kind of mentality where you're having a kind of personal connection with an inanimate object. We're always trying to sort of juxtapose those two things, the sort of the humanity with the sort of rigid, you know, electronic kind of um, sound and nature of it, you know. And that sort of tension goes throughout our, our, our songwriting, really. Tesla Girls was, I have to admit, given to me by Martha Ladley, who played keyboards in the band Martha and the Muffins, because she was the girlfriend of Peter Saville, who used to design our sleeves. And she said, I've got an idea for a song which I'm never going to write, called Tesla Girls. People ask me about the lyrics. It's taking Nikola Tesla, father of modern electricity, you know, created the alternating um, current motor and dynamo uh, instead of DC, because Edison, who was really pissed off with him for doing AC, because Edison would have had to have had a power station on every block, because DC was so inefficient. Whereas AC, you could go much longer, because the current went backwards and forwards instead of just all in one loop. In order to discredit alternating currents, Thomas Edison suggested to the US government that they might want to use a, an electric chair using alternating currents to kill people who were being sentenced to death. So he, he suggested the electric chair to discredit alternating currents. And I didn't want to write about Nikola Tesla. No. I wanted to humanise it and imagine the kind of people who use his inventions every day but don't think about it, don't know who he is. I mean, listen, there's people driving Tesla cars who don't know who Nikola Tesla is, you know? But did Elon Musk ever call <laughs> you to use the song? Did he fuck? I mean, he could have it for five million. Any, you know, he could even have it forever <laughs> for five million. <laughs> He should have heard it, surely, yeah, you know, yeah, if he'd yeah. done his research, but I don't know, maybe he's too busy counting his money. Yeah.